Around the year 800, ships began appearing along the coasts of Ireland from the wild Atlantic seas off Scotland. They were dark and low on the water. They sailed fast and their decks were crowded with fierce warriors with long slashing swords, tall spears and great battle axes. The terrified Irish called them Genti, pagan barbarians, or Gael, foreigners, or Nordmany, men from the north. But today we know these men as Vikings. The Vikings came from the lands in the north of Europe, which today we call Scandinavia. Those from the east, in modern Sweden and Finland, raided the rivers of Russia and Poland, down as far as the Black Sea and Constantinople. Those from Denmark tended to head southwest towards the lands bordering the English Channel, the Netherlands, eastern England and France. The Vikings who raided Ireland, on the other hand, came mostly from Norway, sailing in short hops, first to the Shetlands only a few hours away, then on to Orkney and around the north of Scotland and down through the islands of the Scottish Hebrides. We don't know how many years they were sailing these waters before they arrived on Irish shores or whether some had stopped to set up farms and settlements in the various islands along the way. When they got to Ireland, some camped on the islands and along the coastline. Others moved up rivers like the Shannon or the Barrow and went inland to settle. Why did the Vikings raid Ireland? What were they looking for? In the beginning, they travelled only in the summer, after the crops had been planted and before they needed to be back on the farm for the harvest in the autumn. This is why the Irish poet wrote about winter seas. Fierce is the wind tonight, it tosses the sea's white mane. I need not fear the violent warriors from Norway crossing the Irish Sea. After a while, though, the Vikings began to settle in Ireland, taking advantage of the good land, the extensive woods and the plentiful fishing they found there. Some lived in newly created trading centres and towns, such as Difflin, Dublin, or Chimrecker, Limerick, while others set up farms in the Irish countryside. They learned to build houses like the native Irish did, in wattle and in stone, rather than the long houses of turf and planks that they were accustomed to live in, far away in Norway. This is the home of Thor Grim Gellison and Berg Thora Ottersdottir, who came from Scotland to settle in County Clare. The family live in an Irish-style ring fort close to the River Shannon. At the moment, Thorgrim is away selling fish in England, so his wife, Berg Thora, runs the farm and his son, Cormac, is the man in charge. The family have an Irish slave. Her name is Aoife Garv. She was captured by Vikings when she was a small girl and sold in the slave market in Waterford. She hauls the wood to keep the fire stocked as well as water for drinking and every so often bracken and straw to cover the floor and provide beds to sleep in. Because they live outside the city, she also grinds cereal every morning to make bread and porridge. On this occasion, however, the wood she has brought is not for the fire, but to make a post for the fence. Aoife is not allowed to use the axe, which is sharp and dangerous. Normally, it would only be the men who would work with the axe, but in the summer, when the men are mostly away, the women have to do all the jobs themselves. Here is the young daughter of the house, Astrid, who is working on it. The mother of the family, Berg Thora, came originally from Norway, although her father moved to Scotland when she was a small girl. Even though her son Cormac is in charge of the farm, Berg Thora is in charge of the house and Cormac has to do what she says. She carries a stick and when she is cross, she hits people across the legs with it. She has arthritis in her legs, so sometimes she finds it difficult to walk fast. Because the family is wealthy, they own an expensive Viking sword. Like other swords, it has a name in its own right. It is called chiviting, or white thing. 
Many stories are told of the great battles and the fights in which it has taken part. Cormac's grandfather found the sword buried in an old grave mound in Orkney. He gave it to Cormac's dad when they moved to County Clare and now, while Cormac has been left in charge, he gets to wear the sword. Every day he polishes the blade and makes sure the edges are sharp and ready if enemies decide to attack. Cormac is married to Gunhild. She is the daughter of his father Thorgrim's partner in England, the man who was helping Thorgrim sell his fish. She was born and brought up in West Kirby in the Wirral, on the west coast of England. Gunhild's father is very wealthy and Cormac was lucky to marry her. She is wearing one of the very fashionable hoods from London which her father gave her when she married, as well as a beautiful pair of oval brooches. She has heard that some of these hoods are so grand that they are made of silk imported from the great city of Byzantium, far to the east. Her own hood is of good linen dyed pink with expensive French dye. She has a lena or under tunic of beautiful white linen and a warm blue dress as well as a pink apron to match her hood. She's not very good at housekeeping but she likes to sew and embroider and comb her hair. Cormac has a sister. Her name is Halgird. She's making butter in the churn. It has been arranged that she will marry Fionn Hinblindi, Fionn the Squinter, from Iceland. He is away, travelling with his two brothers on their ship, and when they make their fortune they will come back and Fionn and Halgird will marry. Then they will go and live in Iceland, where his dad has promised them land for a farm. First though, the brothers need to make enough money so they can afford to marry and buy all they need. Meanwhile, Halgird is still living with her family. Fionn has been gone nearly two years and she has not heard from him in a very long time. He may be in Norway or Scotland or England or Spain or even in Ireland. She doesn't know. She tries very hard to be patient, but she finds Gunhild very annoying because she is so lazy. Today is like most days. Halgird is preparing fish for dinner and her younger sister Astrid is winding wool. Because it is a warm sunny day they have decided to sit outside rather than inside the house where it is dark and difficult to see. The man coming in the gate and whistling is Duffnell, an Irish man who lives across the hill. He is not very rich but he has a good flock of sheep and he hopes that the Lord will rent him some cattle next year. He has spent the winter clearing the ground so that they will have good pasture. Cormac is always happy to see him and he likes to visit and to eat some of the good food that the girls have prepared. Berg Thora doesn't like him though. She's afraid that he wants to marry Halgird and if that happens, the family will lose the wealth yeah, that Fionn Hinblindi will bring back when he returns. Who do you think you are? Faribu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Faribu? Yeah. yeah. Off you go. Big dumb. Do you know who right, I am? Okay. Right. Do you know who I am? Do you All right. go? Go. All right. Get. Fine. go. 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 Dinner time and the family are sitting by the fire. Astrid is very musical and she is playing her harp. Cormac is sitting in the corner on the comfortable bench with his wife. Because she is a slave, Aoife does not get to sit beside the fire but must remain out by the door. Luckily it isn't raining today. Oh. Girls, tomorrow, tomorrow, go out with your brother and fix the gate. Okay, we can't have holes in the fences. Was is with me? Mein Mann, der ist nie wichtig, oder wie? We are trying our best, your father. Sie When he comes back, aussitzen. then you'll be engaged and you'll be married. But we're not going to get anything for you with you sitting round with a puss like that on your face the whole time. Okay. You okay there, Pat? Would you like some of these? Um, uh, Case is gestohlen worden. Oh my, someone is raiding the boathouse down by the river. Your father told you often enough. Oh, does no one do anything properly round here? He's hopeless. He's hopeless.
Not all the Vikings who settled in Ireland were peaceable farmers. Because they were such good shipbuilders, the Vikings changed the lives of everybody in the lands in which they settled. People could travel much more easily even though it wasn't very comfortable. If a ship was travelling along the coast, they would stop at night and bring down the sail and use it as a tent over the ship. If they were far out to sea, people just sat on the benches or lay on the deck and tried to sleep there. Sometimes people were forced to travel even when they didn't want to. This is Snorri Olafsson, a slave trader from Difflin, modern-day Dublin. He is travelling in the west of Ireland to collect slaves which he will sell in the market when he gets home. Some of them he has bought from other Vikings and others have been sold to him by Irish chiefs who have defeated their enemies in battle. By selling them as slaves, they can both punish those who fought with them and at the same time make a profit. Snorri has been visiting with Tyg O'Brien of Killaloo and Cunla McNamara of Corkham Row and they have sold him people they captured when fighting in South Galway. Of course, travelling can be a dangerous business. Snorri is now outside the lands of his hosts and moving through the kingdom of the Efagenta, south of the Shannon. He is intending to travel down the river to the Viking port of Chimrecker, modern Limerick, where he will hire a ship to carry his slaves to Difflin. The local Ephigenta lord has had a good day. He has captured a leader of the O'Flaherta from South Galway, whose family will pay a handsome ransom for his return. He also has two foreign women to sell at the slave market in Shimrecker, but he has no quarrel with the Irish women, so he let them go. They will have a long walk to get home to kill Macdua, even if they do not get lost, and they must travel through the lands of the Dal Kosh, who were responsible for capturing them in the first place. They're the lucky ones, though. Even though Snorri, the slave master, has died, the Irish man who won the fight is still going to sell the others as slaves. <laughs> 